ask you when the particle changes direction, it's when what equals zero? Error. No, not when x equals zero. Oh, oh stop just spitting out stuff. When velocity is zero, okay? When velocity is zero, and velocity is the derivative, so let's think back to the original function, it changes direction when it changes from moving to the left or to the right, or when it changes from increasing to decreasing, or decreasing to increasing, because the derivative is changing from positive to negative, or change from positive to negative, you got to equal zero. So when the derivative equals zero, then you have a relative maximum or a minimum. Because your function, we're putting the answers of the function right here, the function is changing from decreasing to increasing. Think about the slopes of the tomato line. Over here, they are negative. They're becoming less negative right here. And then they've got to start becoming positive, so they've got to go to a point where the slope is zero, where you have a horizontal tangent line. Um, or the function may not be differentiable. Weren't there a couple of those where technically it's not differentiable? Number six, what else? Number five, okay. Uh, number one's okay. All right, but numbers five and six, uh, you shouldn't have gotten zero for the derivative. The derivative was on the primes, okay, because you have a sharp point. Yeah, I gave you an absolute value rule. Did you not get zero on the bottom? Mm, you didn't get zero. Okay. So, yes, you have an absolute value rule, but if you apply that absolute value rule and you're talking about x equals zero, guess what? You're going to get zero on the bottom, okay? Uh, and that's where it's undefined. So we have two cases. Either the derivative uh, equals zero, aka horizontal tangent line, or uh, the function's not differentiable. It's not differentiable, so that means you've got a zero in the denominator of your derivative. Okay. Um, okay, so here's the definition. Critical points. Critical points. This is a very critical uh, concept. Um, critical points are very, very, very important calculus. Okay, we're really we're getting into the fun stuff. I think this is fun stuff because these are the applications uh, where you can see it, it becomes a little less abstract. It becomes a little more concrete. Okay. So uh, a number c is called a critical point if either f prime of c is zero, or f prime of c does not exist, which typically means the denominator of the derivative equals zero, okay? So critical points come from either the derivative equaling zero at that point, or the derivative not existing at that point. So let's find some critical points of this function. Now, I gave you the picture of the function, so we should know what the answer is going to be. What should, what are the critical points of this function? Two and four. Two and four. That's where the horizontal tangent lines are. But let's actually go through the process of finding them algebraically, because if I had to give you that graph, and you've got x cubed minus 9x squared plus 24x minus 10, you don't have any way of doing that without your calculator. Okay, you have no way of figuring out that that is a relative maximum and a relative minimum at two and four, respectively. Are the critical points being defined for y as the yeah, uh, Well, if they ask for the critical points, that's just referring to the x, and then part b, find the values at the critical points, that's talking about the y values, okay? So first step, we're going to take the derivative. So f prime of x is 3x squared minus 18x plus 24. Okay, that is a quadratic equation. Um, it's never going to be undefined. Okay, quadratic equations are never undefined. So we're only concerned about where this equals zero. So that means I'm going to factor. I'm going to go ahead and start by factoring out a GCF. Factor a GCF of 3. And then x minus 4 times x minus 2. Set those equal to zero. Now I do set three equal to zero just so that you don't forget if you were to pull out a GCF involving a variable, 
that you can't leave that part out. So in this case, 3 does not equal 0, so it does nothing for us. Um, but then x minus 4 is equal to 0, x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x equals 4 and x equals 2. Now, for the sake of time and simplicity, I think that we can handle when we get to this point just saying x is 4 and x is 2. Okay? You do not have to take the time or waste the time and effort of setting them equal to 0 and then saying that they equal 4 and 2. Okay? I think we can take that leap of faith with it. Okay? Um, so save yourself some time, space, and effort. Okay, so those are our critical points, 4 and 2, which we already knew. Um, but sometimes they will ask you for the what are the extreme values so you actually need to find the total coordinate point. We've only found where they occur. We want to know what they are. Where is X? What is Y? Okay, that's very important. Where is X? What is Y? You may want to write that down somewhere on the paper um, because they like to use that terminology um, and it's not always clear by the answer choices which one they're looking for. Um, so you've got to know where is x, what is y. So if we want to find the values of the function, we've got to plug at, uh, 2 and 4 back into the original. So f of 2, I don't know why I always like to plug in the smallest one first. 2 cubed minus 9 <laughs> times 2 squared plus 24 times 2 minus 10. Please, please, guys, label things, okay? Um, you're getting better, okay? Y'all are getting better at labeling things, but still we're a little inconsistent with that. Um, and I'm afraid it will cost you points on those free response questions on the final exam. I've been kind of lenient, but I'm going to have to start getting a little more um, hardcore about it so that you don't lose points. So 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4, 9 times 4 is 36, 24 times 2 is 48. Let's see here, uh, 8 minus 36 is negative 28, plus 48 minus 10, so that's 20 minus 10, that's 10. F of 2 is 10. Okay, F of 4, 4 cubed is 64, 4 squared is 16, times 9, 8. Uh, I want to mess that one up. 9 times 4, 4, 5, uh, 10, 144. Okay, 144. Uh, that's 96. So that's negative 80 plus 96 minus 10. So that's 16 minus 10. That is 6. Okay. So we have a relative max. This, the question didn't really ask for it, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just so that we're in the habit of identifying a relative max at 210 and a relative min at 4, 6. Find the critical points of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Again, I gave you the picture. This one's very, very simple. You can clearly see it. Um, but let's go through the process of using our derivative. Okay, f prime of x. Let's see here. What was our derivative rule for the absolute value? It is what's inside the absolute value over the entire absolute value function times the derivative of what was in the inside. So the x over the absolute value of x is equal, or times 1. Okay. Um, so there are two reasons why the critical number is 0 here, but really anytime you have a denominator, you set that equal to 0. Okay. Anytime you have a denominator like this, you set it equal to 0. Obviously, x is 0 to give you an absolute value of x equal to 0. Um, so x equals 0 is a critical point. Mm -hmm. That's the derivative. Okay, x equals 0 is our critical point, which obviously you can see here. It is an absolute minimum. 
critical points occur where your derivative equals zero or where it is undefined. It would be undefined because it has a denominator. If that denominator can equal zero, which in this case it can, that's where we have a critical point. Um, and I use that one specifically because I wanted to point out the fact that it's technically not differentiable at zero. If you plug zero back into your derivative, you get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. Um, that's a no-no. It's not differentiable at zero. Um, so, you know, you have a, uh, you have a, a sharp point. Okay? 